I saw my Lord a coming. I looked up and I saw my Lord a coming down the road. Oh, down the road. So welcome to St. Bartholomew Catholic Church in beautiful Wyzetta, Minnesota, on the north shore of Wyzetta Bay of Lake Minnetonka, as we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Welcome, thank you for tuning in as we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. Now, the Easter season is seven weeks long. We're two weeks in, five weeks to go. At the end of it, we have Pentecost. Nice connection today because Jesus, or Peter is preaching the Pentecost sermon. Now, the um, readings of Easter have some very nice focus. Last week, we talked about how Jesus risen is present in the community. Today, we're going to have a little bit more of a flavor about how Jesus is present in the Eucharist. Jesus is present to us in many different ways. Now, we don't want to offend him, but sometimes we do with our sins. So as we begin this liturgy, let's look into our hearts and how we have offended Almighty God and ask for mercy. Lord Jesus, you are a prophet powerful in word and deed. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the promised Messiah of God. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, the blood you shed washes away our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Thank you. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that, rejoicing new in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. 
you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Lord, let your face shine on. wonders for his faithful ones. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Lord, let your face shine on us, shine on us. O oh Lord, let the light of your continent shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart. Lord, let your face shine on us, shine on us. As soon as I lie down, peacefully asleep. For you alone, O oh Lord, bring security to my dwelling. Lord, let your face shine on us, shine on us. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Halle, halle, halle. Halle, halle, halle. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you for joining us, all of you who are near and far. I want to impart to you the blessing that comes from the book of Numbers that my mom would always say to me, oftentimes at night before bed, and I never knew it was scriptural. I never knew it was actually called the priestly blessing. But may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. I hope that these days of Easter, these, this beautiful season, is a season in which you experience that joy that of the Lord's countenance looking upon you and loving you and showing you the grace of his presence. Now, I'll never forget what a good friend once told me. He said, it's too good not to be true. It's too good not to be true. And why is this such a striking statement? Why, why does this stick with me, even though this was years ago that he told me this? Because it flies in the face of what our culture constantly tells us, of what we, it's almost a common bit of parlance in our American culture. It's too good to be true. For example, given the way that the twins, for all their merits, uh, the Minnesota twins have played on average in the last decade or two, It seems too good to be true that they really ever won the World Series. Yet they did. And they won it actually twice under their official title of the Minnesota Twins. Not too good to be true, but in fact, true. The same thing I I see happening, the same dynamic happens to the apostles today in the gospel. It just happens time after time. Jesus revealing himself and then there's a little bit of incredulity or doubt, or it's too good to be true. Jesus, the risen Lord, appears to them in the upper room, and he says to them, peace be with you. After he was dead, he comes back and appears to them and says these words. But instead of peace, what do they experience? They were startled, terrified, and questions arose in their hearts. They even think they've seen a ghost, an apparition, and not the real person that they knew and walked with and lived with for three years under his tutelage, under his discipleship. 
But then he gives him fur- their, them further proof. He says, look at my hands and my feet, pointing to his wounds that are still there, although he is in his resurrected, glorified body. Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. Because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see that I have. And he doesn't stop there. He gives them even more proof by eating a real fish, a baked fish, right in front of them. A thing that no apparition, no ghost could do. And although they were amazed and they were joyful, as it says in the gospel, it says that they were still incredulous for joy. Which says to me the word incredulity means there's something hesitating to believe, something that isn't quite able to fully adhere to this truth, this fact, that Christ had risen from the dead and was right in front of me. This man that they had just seen dead on the cross three days prior is now present before me and alive. That man in whom they put their entire hope, the man for whom they left everything behind and followed him, the man who loved them so tenderly and said, you, I want you to follow me. That man whom they had believed fully and truly, this must be the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Seeing him right before their eyes, it still seemed impossible. He was dead three days ago. Could it really be true? Or is it too good to be true? Now we too are victims of this same incredulity, victims, and we allow ourselves sometimes to say this same question subtly to ourselves. Is it too good to be true? We can, we can cheapen or lessen or diminish, reduce God's great promises. They're greater than anything else we've ever heard of, so it, it makes sense that we would kind of think, is this, really, is this really actually true? But we can say that and start to doubt him. But Jesus promises great things. He says to us in the gospel, not the gospel today, but in a different gospel, he says, Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That means 2,000 years later, today, we're still before the end of the age. He's with us here and now. Oh, but objection number one, Jesus is in heaven. That's far away. That's a different place. He's not, that was just a figure of speech. Too good to be true. Objection number two, I'm a great sinner. I'm too great of a sinner. There's too many uh, things that I've done or too many things that have happened to me that are horrible. God can't be with me. It's too good to be true. Objection number three, and even more subtle, it's just too big of a promise. How could it really be true? No one else has ever made that claim that I'll be with you always. Maybe my mom or dad has said that I'll be with you even if I die. And that's true in a certain sense, but they're not really truly present in the same way and in a powerful way in which Christ promises and claims to be. It's too good to be true that God can be with me. That's what we can think. But the fact of the matter is that he's risen from the dead and he is still with us. And this is a fact. The twins won the World Series twice, even though both times happened before I was born. It's a fact. No matter how many times I might object or say, uh, based on their performance recently or based on their performance in my early childhood, there's no way that they could have won a World Series. But they won two of them. And in a similar way, Jesus has risen from the dead just as he promised the fact, indisputable. And he has remained with us too, just as he promised. No matter what objections we come up with, he is faithful. He doesn't leave us. But the difference between Jesus and the twins, (laughs) and there are great differences, I hope you know that, is that he is infinitely better, infinitely greater, and infinitely more faithful and trustworthy than the Minnesota Twins or any human entity or institution or person. He's, for one, he never strikes out. A second thing, he never bats at 200, not even 300 or 400. 
He never fails to make it to the playoffs. And in fact, he's never, he's already won the World Series forever. That's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So my brothers and sisters, as we reflect today, I ask you and I ask myself, what are the objections? What are the quiet, the subtle ways in which the enemy tries to get in and we say to ourselves, it's just too good to be true that God could be with me right now, here and now. I invite you to reflect on this today. Now in a few moments, Jesus will feed us with his body, his true body, and his true blood at the altar, just as he promised. It will still look like bread. It'll still look like wine. It'll still look and taste like bread. It'll still taste like wine. And it'll come in a form that's much smaller than we would imagine God to be. God's got to be bigger than that. He can't come under the form of bread and wine. That's the subtle, the speaking of the enemy saying, it's too good to be true. In fact, he will be brought to you. In a few moments, he will be brought to you, well, spiritually, for those who are joining us remotely, but those who join us at the Mass, he'll be physically brought to us by imperfect ministers such as myself. Oh, God can't come through an imperfect minister, can he? But this man, who is God, keeps true to his promises. I'm with you always, even to the end of the earth. Today, may we say with my friend who told me years ago, it is too good not to be true. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Amen. So let us now turn to Almighty God with our prayers. For all who lead and serve the church, Pope Francis, Archbishop Bernard Hebda, Bishop Andrew Cousins, our pastor, Father Mike Van Sloan, and all clergy, deacons, and religious, we pray to the Lord. For the world, for all who lead and govern nations, for those who lead our cities in these difficult times, for peoples who live in constant fear and danger, we pray to the Lord. For the desire to heal divisiveness and any divisions within our families, within our communities, and within our nation, we pray to the Lord. For the young people of our parish, for those who will receive their first communion in the sacrament of confirmation in the coming weeks, we pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, dying, or grieving, for all who are seeking the healing power of the risen Christ, for those who feel the absence of God in their lives, for those in any kind of need, we pray to the Lord. And for all those who have died, 
for those who have been victims of the pandemic, for all who have died as a result of acts of violence, that God would grant them a place of peace and happiness in the kingdom, in the kingdom of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love and mercy, we thank you for calling us to live as witnesses of your risen Son. Help us to live as loving, forgiven, repentant members of the body of Christ. Help us to better reflect the presence of Christ in all that we think, say, and do. And we bring our prayers to you now through Christ our Lord. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours would be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you've given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For Jesus is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, he has restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, our Auxiliary Bishop, all the clergy and religious, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles and martyrs, Saint Bartholomew, Saint Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 So at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we might be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, where the kingdom, the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. 
Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And by the Lord, Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. We the many are one body. We As one blood and as one body, we are living sign. We are one in the light of God. As we live the feast, be sacrifice, be broken bread, be Christ to all those we sorrow and pain are changed in your sacrifice once given all is sanctified let us eat at this kingdom meal let us drink with joy we live as one for all the world as church we sing and rejoice Jesus lives again, the Christ is raised, our God be praised, rejoicing, alleluia. Shine on us, holy light, ever blessed, ever bright, warm our hearts with your Shine on.
like to invite you to please remain seated for the announcements. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but um, April 17th and 18th is the beginning of National Volunteer Appreciation Week. Really, um, volunteers are at the heart and soul of every Catholic parish. I mean, so many of the ministries are carried out by volunteers, and they really help the parish accomplish its mission. So we really want to be offering our sincere gratitude for all of our volunteers, both in the past and currently. Many of you are actually volunteering even during COVID, and once our parish programs get resuming, and we're hoping that those days will be very soon, that many of you who have kind of not been volunteering as much of late would be actually be ready to volunteer again um, in the future. Now, um, unfortunately, for those of you who are watching on video, um, you don't get to enjoy this particular thing, but we have a little appreciation gift that we're going to be giving to everyone who attends Mass in person this weekend. So while Let's Bakery has prepared for us some chocolate chip cookie baskets, and so we're going to be inviting all people who are volunteers past or present to be grabbing one of those baskets as they leave after Mass. I guess we're just going to have to say thank you, and thank you is going to have to do it for you, for those who are tuned in to this version. We have a couple of other things that we would like for you to keep in mind in your prayer. So Jana McDonald passed away, and her funeral is going to be here at St. Bart's this coming uh, Tuesday at 11. So please remember Jana, commend commend her soul to Almighty God, and remember, remember her prayers as well. And we have another parishioner who passed away. Her name is Genevieve Lane. And so her funeral is going to be on Thursday, also at 11 o'clock here in the morning. I'm here at St. Bart's. So you want to remember Jen, too, in your prayers, as well as the rest of her family. We have some good news. So we have a baptism this week, Trenton Lambert. And so we want to welcome him into the Christian community of faith. We have one person that's kind of in a difficult situation, David Boney. Um, He's the father of one of our parishioners, Bonnie Hector, and he's entering hospice these days. And so you want to please remember him in your prayers as well. Now, as we go through the rest of the Easter season, one of the programs that we've been able to continue offering is Bible study. Just want to remind you that for these last two weeks of April and for the month of May, Bible study will continue. You can do this in person here in church on Thursday evenings at 630, or you can watch it live streamed at that time or a time thereafter. And Andrew Allen is continuing to offer his Bible study on Friday mornings, and he does that by Zoom. So if you want to take advantage of these last six weeks, you know, just let him know, and he'll put you on the invite list for the Zoom presentation for Bible study. So that concludes all of our announcements, so let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by these eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. to breathe.